We have already talked about the Schrodinger equation in one dimension in which H consists of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the particle. We can easily generalize this concept in three dimensions using three momentums along the three axes X, Y, and Z. But it's really important to note that these momentums are operators and can be written as three derivatives along X, Y, and Z. We can use the concept of gradients to write the Schrodinger equation in a more efficient way. Gradient of a scalar f gives a three-dimensional vector. We can write a dot product of the gradient operator with itself, which gives a new operator called the Laplacian, which now we can use to introduce our new form of the Schrodinger equation. Now, here is our Schrodinger equation, but this time in three dimensions in which i is the square root of minus 1, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, m is the mass of the particle, and v is the potential, but this time in three dimensions. In three dimensions, the normalization integral is written in this form. Note that the wave function is now the function of r, and this is a three-dimensional integral. Writing the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions and separating the wave function into two time-independent and time-dependent functions, we can write it as two time-dependent and time-independent equations, which are both equal to a constant E, which you know that is the energy of the system. Finally, the wave function for each different energy can be expressed as a time-independent wave function multiplied by an exponential, which depends on time. Pay attention that in this process we have assumed that the potential energy is time independent. Now, the only thing we need to do is to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation to find the stationary states for the system. Finally, the solution to the Schrodinger equation can be written as a sum over all possible energies.